All right, let's head up here into a private zone because there's people camping next to me there because there's always an ear near me because that's how the matrix works. It wants to know what the outside of the system people think, see and do. Far out, it's 38 degrees today. Even as an Aussie, I'm a little bit struggling here. Ooh. Can hear my breath picking up. ASMR. <sighs> Holy shit. You would think that I'm unfit, but <laughs> I'm really not. I grew up as a cross country runner. Even after all the marijuana smoking, I'm still good. I ran, I still remember running 12 kilometers just because I wanted to, because I was, I don't know, just wanted to stay fit on Iluka Beach after a four hour surf a few years ago. I don't run anymore, but anyway. Right, so why are Uruguayans so unfit and um, fat? Well, obviously when I say this, what sounds like an absolute all Uruguayans, obviously, you know, I, I can't take, you can't take anything to everyone, right? Because um, there are people that are different, right? Pardon me. But obviously when I sound like I'm talking of an absolute and say Uruguayans in general, I'm talking about most people, right? Majority. So yeah, oh, I can rephrase it and say majority. There you go, you happy? <laughs> but it's, it's generally the culture. That's why I just leave it at Uruguayans. Because, as you're going to see in another video, I'll take you in a little shop. I, I just found, like, the perfect shop who, just around the corner here from Camping Periopolis, which has, like, just the average normal selection of food that I see in every single little corner shop, right? Not grand, big supermarket, but just the average shop in Uruguay. They all stock the same products. Exactly the same, by the way. Which reminds me of the North Korean video I saw where there was Coronas and beers lined up in this shop and a guy goes in and asks to buy one and they can't buy them because they're just for show. Now it's not like that, it's not that extreme in Uruguay, you can buy everything that's in the shop, it's not like just there on display because in North Korea they're just trying to put up a full on front to the world, right, that there is a society going on when there's not. It's basically one giant slave encampment, North Korea. Now, it's not nowhere near like that here. That's not what I'm insinuating. I'm not trying to lie and fool the world. All I'm trying to do is reveal the communist nature of Uruguay. And I'm going to start putting the thumbnail up on most of these videos. It's either going to be the Uruguayan flag to piss them off. <laughs> That'll get some extra views. Um, and all the communist party flag which you'll see I've got already on several videos. Which isn't that interesting that that exists. <gasps> but you know what doesn't exist? A socialist Uruguay flag. Oh, that's interesting. I thought they were socialists. So where is the socialist party? How come when I Google, you know, Uruguay, I can find a communist uh, expression, but not a socialist expression flag? Oh, that's interesting. Maybe I'm correct. After all, <laughs> oh god, they're funny. It's just funny how in denial people are in this world to keep comfort so that they don't have to deal with themselves, face themselves, you know, heal issues. Let's say that uh, shamans, you know, curanderos, curers, right, like me, healers are very rare people in this world. And the opposite is the ignorant person, obviously, because to heal something, you have to pay attention to it and you have to face the truth, right? And that's why I'm the perfect person to heal Uruguay. And Krishnamurti, Krishnamurti that uh, Indian guy, I'll keep bringing up his quote, it's like it's not obvious, fucking hell. The solution is always embedded in the problem. So when I keep making videos on Uruguay, which are negative, that's because the problem leads to the solution, you fucking asshole. So why don't you pay attention instead of commenting like a fucking glib retard. So 
take Krishnamurti's advice and, and realize that solutions are embedded in problems and that uh, that would mean that my bother here is not just venting, it is also a type of love. Because to, you know, real love, unconditional love, I'm not, you know, asking conditions for this. I'm not asking anyone to pay me even, which I should be. I should give a consultation fee for this. What is this? Oh, it's a tank. I was wondering what the structure was. It seems it's a big water tank. Interesting. If I live in the bushes here, I can sneak in and get me some water. Oh, and it's flowing. Excellent. Just found myself a water source. Because <laughs> I'm planning on staying in these bushes, I think. Maybe through winter even. But definitely, uh, if I can't find a house, this is the best spot to be. And it's right next to the camping ground. And the fence is right there. The road's right there, as you can see. That goes up the mountain here, Cerro del Toro. <laughs> so I just found myself a running water source. That's fucking excellent. Just let me have a quick drink. I just want to see if it's drinkable. Never drink it fully straight away. Spit it out, just get it on your tongue then your saliva will deal with it and all that no I don't think I'm not sure I can drink that it's acidic too yeah that's quite acidic I don't know what this is some kind of tank obviously that's weird hey it's next to a soccer field too it's quite weird anyway um, I'm going to head back into the shade because it is a 38 degree day. It's fucking me up. <laughs> I want to be able to think properly. <clears throat> so what we were saying was, uh, what was this video about? See, now, wow, just a few minutes in this heat, eh? Um, oh yeah, why are Uruguayans so fat is because they have the same products. Now what it is is cheese, milk, bread and meat. That's what does it, right? They're not a culture who uh, has made it very far into the health movement. Remember what was at the end of history was love and psychedelia right at the end. But also what was there was the health movement and the vegan movement, right? Remember that? You are not your body. And so veganism helps you become more uh, your spirit. Because as you declog the body can take on higher light and that's one thing that Uruguayans have a, a heavy problem with it's very difficult for them to take on the things that I tell them and and even think even crunch move those neurons they're not a very brain plastic people they're very stubborn pig-headed there's a lot of Italian and German influence so we know they're gonna have that pig-headed and stubbornness from them um, <clears throat> and just the food and that's what makes them that stubborn pig-headedness then there's the commie vibration right the communism vibration as we've already discussed in just endless videos on this channel they're not really social yes they are socialists but they're also communists and that's the part I'm trying to deal with <laughs> God why is it so hard to understand <laughs> I don't understand why it is so hard to understand. Oh wait, I do. It's because it's very hard for them, like I was saying, to move those neurons. They're not a very brain plastic population due to the food that they're eating. I recently made a video about kombucha and um, that was in a store near here. Very expensive little kombucha for six dollars. You saw that on the video. And I was saying how you need like Multipli multiferous, multiferous nutrition, like many, you know, multiple poly nutrition, because this kombucha had just a ton of uh, herbs in it, and each herb would have maybe 30 actions, right? So there's a lot of actions in that kombucha. That's why I made a health consultation on it. And I said, you need elixirs, that kombucha, which is a tonic, was turned into elixir by having so many herbs in it. So, you know, kombucha by itself straight is a tonic. You can take it every day. And uh, that's what a tonic is. It's a daily affair. An elixir 
is a concrescence, this word I keep using on this channel. Maybe you should figure it out, but I'll give you a quick hint. A man walking in the trees is a concrescence because we're more complex than the medium. So this kombucha was an elixir, and all elixirs are meant to be concrescences. If it's not a concrescence, if it's not a, a multiflorous thing, it's not an elixir. That's part of the definition of an elixir. It's uh, also, you know, that's not the main definition. An elixir means like a life giver and a purity substance. It's like, I, I can never forget this cacao elixir I, I got at Happy High Herbs, um, Yukai, Australia. Because to, to have a, a cacao base elixir was just pa excellent, par excellence, you know, par excellence, uh, epic. So anyway, but also one of the main things, uh, one of the main aspects of an elixir is the multiferous nature it has to be, you know, a lot of nutrients in there. Otherwise, it's not an elixir. Because an elixir is something that's uh, a concrescence. Like I say, you t it's like a psychedelic. You take it rarely, but, you, you know, you take a good dose so it affects your whole body. Anyway, what were we saying? Sorry, it's really, really hot. Um... Look, the, the reason that they're also like fat and unhealthy is um, because it's in the culture. And also mate, you know, the, the national drink of Uruguay, this uh, mate, which is essentially just a sour tea, is pretty cool in winter. You have your hot thermostat carried around your arm and you have a big fat belly and you're a Uruguayo. <laughs> they're all the same. Trust me, come here, you'll see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. They carry, like, in their arm, arm like that, their, their uh, thermostat, and then they have their little cup in their hand and sipping away. <laughs> it's it's very, uh, very common. And uh, they always have a big gut. <laughs> now, mate creates edema. Do you know what edema is? It's like excess water trapped in the body. And it's, uh, it's like... It, kind of shares its habitat with the mucosal membrane uh, and mucosal clogging. That's basically what edema is. It's basically mucosal clogging. It's not just excess water, because water is, water is H2O. So it's not just extra oxygen and extra uh, hydrogen trapped in their bodies. You see what I mean? Actually what it is, it's, it's extra mucosa. Or pus. <laughs> you know, when you get a cut and it pusses up, what is that? <gasps> Here it comes, Uruguay, an infection. You're infected because of the meat, because you're not veganizing off the meat. You're not cleaning it out. You're just stacking it up, stacking it up. And what's in the meat? Hormones, all this crap, all these things that create infectious nature in the body. Let's not mention the methane uh, deposition in the uh, colon and, and all the other bad effects of meat. Now, it's, it's fine to eat meat now and then because you are a meat sack body. So it makes fucking sense, doesn't it? And there's many things that you can find in meat like adrenochrome that you can't find in fucking plants, you moron vegans. But balance is the ultimate thing. And so they're very unbalanced in the cheese, the bread. Like one of the main things you'll find on the street here is torta frita, which is fried bread. It's these round, flat breads with a hole in the middle so you can put your finger in it, I think. <laughs> I don't know why they put the hole in the middle. But it's essentially a round disc of bread and they fry it. So it's fried bread. I mean, oil and bread. That's a, a recipe for disaster of fatness, right? <laughs> That's going straight to fat deposits. Your body doesn't need that shit. It's not micronutrition. Your brain is not going, oh, please give me oil and bread <laughs> so I can fucking stuff myself up. And that's why they have all these fat bodies and they're stuffed full. And then there's the meat and the cheese and the milk. Now, these are the, just main staples, right? This is how they all eat. Yes, yeah, sure, they eat rice and stuff as well. And rice is fattening too. As we know, sumo wrestlers eat rice. So as you can see, you know, the rice, the bread and oil, right? You find torta fritas on every street in friggin' Uruguay. 
um, and then the empanadas. Empanadas in many shops are off meat because they're sitting there so long. Actually, I learned at Red Rooster when I was 15, <laughs> I learned this. So what about you 40-year-old, 50-year-old Uruguayans? Where are you at? Obviously, nobody does research. I learned this when I was 15 at Red Rooster. Bacteria multiply uh, 200,000 every two hours, something like that. 